Welcome into the Inside Carolina podcast. If you're listening to this podcast, you know what just happened at 1020 a.m. on Thursday morning. The news broke that Roy Williams is retiring from the head coaching position at UNC. After 48 years of coaching, uh, spent as an assistant at UNC, as a head coach at Kansas, and of course at North Carolina. Um, just massive news um, for anyone who loves and follows UNC basketball. We're going to get right into it. We have Sheryl McMillan here from Inside Carolina, and of course, Greg Barnes, our beat writer here at Inside Carolina. This is a reaction podcast, and we're going to talk everything Roy Williams and just kind of get an instant reaction, perspective, some analysis. I'm going to go straight to Sherelle. Sherelle, what's the background of this decision? What can you tell us about kind of how this developed and what do you know right now regarding Roy Williams and his decision to retire? I, I think you can say from the people around the Smith Center, it comes as not just a surprise, but as a shock. Um, over the last week, and, and I guess you can start with the loss to Wisconsin on Friday. You know, in the post game, uh, he just talked about how, you know, college basketball was a little bit different. And, and of course, I think everybody's going to go back now and try to find signs that this was coming. But I don't think he had made that decision. If he had, he hadn't told anyone outside of, you know, maybe his children and, and Wanda, his wife. Um, but, you know, the name, image, and likeness is coming. Um, you know, the transfer portal, we've seen there's 1,100 people in that now. College basketball is just not the same game um, that he grew up coaching and that he, you know, coached for, you know, the majority of his life. So I think that's part of it. But then, you know, after that happened, he started rallying the troops. He had these meetings with players and, you know, they lost a couple of guys, but they were able to really um, kind of fend off a, a mass exodus from the roster by him, you know, making concessions to parents and, and talking to them and everything. And, you know, heading into the weekend, it seemed for us like business as usual because it was okay. They've called a, a transfer portal. They've talked to a high school recruit who they like a lot. And, you know, he's going to rebuild, retool and, and come back. And then this morning, uh, me and Ben were, were talking and, you know, some information started to pour out about, you know, this potential meeting this morning. And, uh, you know, we checked with our sources and the sources confirmed that there was a meeting, but it's April Fool's Day. So it's like, you know, yeah. how much can you really, you know, we get these every year. And um, about, I would say, 10.05, you know, I got a, we got some, some texts from people that said, this is real, this is happening. And, you know, about 15 minutes later, the announcement uh, crossed on Twitter and in y'all's email. Yeah, I mean, this is it's crazy. I mean, I've kind of been waiting for this for a long time. You're like, you're wondering, like, when's it going to happen? Where are you going to be? You hope you're not traveling. You hope you're in Chapel Hill. You hope you're available to work because this is the biggest UNC sports news um, of the last, what, 18 years since Roy was hired. Uh, Greg, you wrote the story. Um, your initial thoughts, the background, and, and, and yeah, what do you think about this decision and where UNC stands right now? Yeah, well, immediately my mind goes back to the end of the Duke game when yep. Roy Williams, first time ever, uh, bends down and kisses center court before he walks off after the senior speeches. And I asked him about that after the game, and, of course, he kind of dismissed it, just saying that uh, it was really just significant for you know, the unique nature of this year and, and not having a uh, crowd there for most of the year and, and not – you know, having the, the young guys really experience what North Carolina basketball is about. Um, but, I mean, maybe in hindsight, uh, he was already kind of thinking in that regard. Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we may not ever know the answer to that. But, yeah, I think, I think North Carolina fans, let me say this first, need to be appreciative of what's happened uh, in this program over the last 60 years, really. Um, it's rare – incredibly rare for a program to have somebody like Dean Smith come in in adversity, turn things around and build a program the way it should be built from the ground up and run it for 36 years. It's something else for his protege to come home, uh, you know, six years later and pick up where, where Dean left off. And I think you can make the case that, that Roy during his peak time, probably had a better stretch uh, than Dean ever had. And for him to win three national championships and for all the success that this program has enjoyed, you just don't see that anywhere. And so it's a very special thing. And um, we knew this day was coming mm -hmm. for sure. However, you know, Roy's told me a number of times, and we had this conversation during the NCAA investigation, which was really hard on Roy. 
that Dean always told him he retired too early. He got fed up with the media. He got fed up with how things were changing and, and got out a bit too soon. Uh, and Roy didn't want to do that. And he always kind of took that to heart. And with the NCAA investigation being so difficult on him, he was not going to leave the program in the midst of that. He wanted to make sure there were better days ahead, not that there was uh, a valley coming. And personally, I took that as, okay, well, he's going he's gonna to want to do what Dean did because what Dean did was he, he handed off a Final Four team to Bill Guthridge to make sure that was a seamless transition. I assumed, based on what Roy had said about the NCAA, is that he was probably going to do the same thing uh, in terms of win, wins and losses. And that's why I thought – that, that wasn't even really an option this offseason. I, I thought it was going to be another year or two down the road once UNC was back to being a consistent top 25 team with a chance of making a deep run. Um, but you, as, as Sherelle said, a lot of things have changed, adding COVID to the mix. Mm. Um, just a lot of things have taken place, and we'll get more details from him later. But you can see how all these things piled up into making him make this decision at this point in time. If you see us looking down or looking away, Sherelle's phone is on fire. We're, we're reaching out to sources, reaching out to players. I'm coordinating with our national desk. It's kind of a wild, you know, day in media because it's just very overwhelming with this, the, the magnitude of this um, announcement. I'm going to go through some stuff here. I probably should have done this at the top. Uh, he was nine, Roy Williams was 903 and 265 and 33 seasons total. That's a 77.774 winning percentage. At UNC, he was – he won 485 games with 163 losses in 18 seasons. That's a 74.8% winning percentage. Of course, the three national titles, 05, 09, 17, nine Final Fours total at Kansas and UNC. He had, let's see, five at UNC. 74.5% winning percentage in the NCAA tournament. Um, went to six finals. He was three and three in finals games. Um, let's see what else here in championship games. Oh, in national semifinals games, he was six and three. I mean, just just tons of numbers here. So many final fours, so many uh, NCAA tournaments. It's a, it's unbelievable career and record here. I'm going to give you my thoughts. Um, I think the game is changing and everyone sees it. Everyone knows it. And y'all both stated on that, that the transfer stuff, the uh, name and likeness stuff, it's so different now. And the volatility of, this season with all the transfers, all the movement, I think is just kind of, it's hard to stay with it. And he was probably fed up with that. And it's just different game for a different type of coach. And um, look, he's not young. He's 70 years old. So he's got, uh, he's got a lot of life to live still. And sometimes the straight, go ahead, Strell. Yeah. And I was going to say, man, like my, my dad is 71. Uh -huh. And when I think about my dad trying to lead a yeah. national basketball program, I'm like, how, like, you know, my dad's retired he enjoys like going to church and like going home. Like those are just kind of the two things that he does. So I'm like, how does this man, you know, feel good enough to fly around the country and go see players and kind of the grind of practice every day? You know, I'm sure that is, you know, that's a heavy weight. And to do that for so long, it's such a high level. It's not like he coached at, you know, Southview High School. You know, he coached as a head coach at Kansas and North Carolina, you know, the two bluest of the blue bloods that you can find, you know, the origin of basketball is at Kansas. He's like, he is directly like traceable back his lineage to James Naismith. So like that mm -hmm. is a heavy weight to carry and to carry that for 30 plus years. I'd imagine, you know, he's just like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired. I'm, it's, yeah. I was going to say, man, he loves golf. Like now he's going to play a lot of golf. He's a member at multiple, multiple country clubs. He's got young grandkids. And those moments, those grandkids growing up, you don't get those, you don't get those moments again. It's a one-time thing. So he's got a house in the mountains. I mean, he has a lot of things to do. And sometimes it's not worth it dealing with all the, the BS he's had to deal with over the course of the last couple of years, especially now with all the movement, um, the Walker Kessler decision to transfer. People leaving for the NBA earlier than it has been in the past. I mean, think about, some of his best teams, those guys stayed for three and four years. Now you've got guys leaving after one year and have to come in commonplace. The game is changing. Um, all right, so let's go. You know, we got the reaction here. Greg, were you surprised? Yes. Okay. Sherelle, were you surprised? Very much so. Okay. Did you think – there's a sense of me that, you know, you want – he thought he would go out on top, you know, try to try to get to another Final Four, try to leave the, the program in a really good place. I wonder what went into that mentality. Any thoughts on that, Greg? Like, why now as opposed to – other than the stuff we already talked about? Yeah, 
I, I, the only thing I can think of there is that, as Pharrell said, you know, they got through the, the player meetings, and it seems like after some uh, shaky waters there to start, that, that maybe he felt as though he got things settled down uh, and that there's a, a good core returning. Because um, as we've talked about, yes, you lose Kessler, which is a blow, and you lose Sharp to the NBA. Uh, but if Baycott returns and, and Caleb Love returns, along with the other pieces, you've got a solid foundation. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. people tend to forget that these kids are freshmen. Um, a lot of them are. And they're going to take significant strides next year. So just in that standpoint, I think they'll be a lot better. Um, and if you can pull in a couple extra guys, then, then I think you're dealing next year. I'm, I'm sure that went into his mentality a little bit, just making sure that, okay, are we in a position where I can leave and I'm not uh, screwing the program over? Because yeah. uh, the program means so much to him. And so I, I just have to assume that's kind of where he got to. And then you know, the great question that everybody's going to want to know is how long he, has he been thinking about this? And Roy has always been – I'm thinking about the present. I'm thinking about preparing for this next opponent. I don't want to talk about the opponent two games down the road. Um, and that's just how he's wired. So I'm, I'm interested to hear what he has to say with that. But I, but I do believe he probably uh, and it finished the season, got through these meetings, and then said, okay, now, now wait a minute. W- what's my next step here? Um, so I, I would not be surprised to hear that this was a decision he came to, you know, in, in short order. You know, maybe – even in the last week. Yes. I mean, the press conference after the Wisconsin game was very emotional. It almost sounded like he had kind of reached that decision then, but I think you're right. I think the turbulence the last couple of weeks maybe pushed him to that decision. You always think about the, the court kiss against uh, Duke as well, because I mean, he lied to our face if, uh, if he didn't uh, know then, um, which is, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, Cheryl, your thoughts on that? I mean, I think it's a, it's kind of a, with the changing of the, of the game now, it's probably a, a kind of a good end and, and, uh, an opportunity for someone else to kind of take the lead that can adapt more to the, the changing game. Yeah. You know, and I, I want to be careful too, because he hasn't, this is for everybody to know we're recording this before his press conference. Mm-hmm. So maybe he comes out and says, you know, I just talked to my wife and we're just tired. You know, maybe it has nothing to do with the transfers and stuff. We, we can infer that because he's kind of hinted at it. Um, so I, I, I just want to be careful because I know I, I said that might be a reason. So I want to be careful with the speculation there. Um, but yeah, it is, it is uh, a new age in college basketball. It is a new day. And everything is, is so much different from even what it was 10 years ago. Like we, were, we had Dewey on a podcast uh, on the beat uh, with Greg the other day. And he was just talking about how different it is, not just from, you know, uh, 1995, but from 2008, how different college basketball is, the players, what their motivations are, um, social media, how everything combined has just kind of uh, made, made that an issue. So I think all that is probably something in his, in his mind. Um, and then, frankly, the last two, last two years have been hard. I mean, uh, not this past season, but the year before last was the, his worst as a head coach, the worst he's ever experienced. And then you follow that up with a season that ha- shows great promise, you know, in, I would say, June or July. And then, you know, you have a global pandemic, which causes all kinds of issues. And then the one-time transfer portal. So I don't think, in my opinion, it probably wasn't one thing. It probably was all these things stacked on top of each other over the last three or four years. Yeah. And going back really to 2015 and in, in the heart of the NCAA stuff. When we come back, I want to talk about a reaction to just to, to Roy as a coach and, and what he means to y'all, what he means to me, what it means to this program, his accomplishments, and then what's next for UNC. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of talk to Greg and Sherelle and see what they can tell us about their thoughts on what's next, um, you know, potential movements and who comes in to lead this program and just general thoughts there um don't have too much information now but certainly these are two of the most plugged in guys on unc basketball first one talking about johnny t-shirt real quick and giant t-shirt.com for all insights carolina subscribers use the 10 percent off discount code to get 10 percent off your uh johnny t-shirt uh purchase a great shop right on franklin street right in chapel hill very local we want to support our local companies the Johnny T-shirt and Johnny T-shirt.com. Guys, if you're listening to this podcast, imagine we have some new listeners. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Inside Carolina podcast that helps us. Rate it. Give us a five-star rating. Give us a little review and, uh, and hit the subscribe button. That really helps us. We're bringing you content almost every day now on basketball, football, even some baseball reactions, news, special guest interviews. So rate and review to the Inside Carolina podcast. 
and we'll be right back with Greg and Sherelle on what's next for Carolina basketball and the meaning of Roy Williams to Carolina hoops. And we're back with Sherelle and Greg from inside Carolina. Let's get some thoughts on Roy Williams. Um, look, I went to UNC 2004, 2008, became a fan when my brother went to UNC. So around 2000. So all I really, I mean, I know the Dean Smith teams. I followed ACC sports uh, my whole life. So I'm very familiar with, um, you know, what Dean Smith did, but Roy Williams is all, is really all I know as a fan, as, as a, a guy I've covered, um, he is UNC basketball to me in those teams. I mean, 05 was my freshman year, 09, one year out. I covered the two final fours in 16 and 17. So, I mean, what he's done and the players he's brought in, that's all I know. So it's, it's just crazy. It's a, it's going to be a new era that begins next year with a new head coach. So I want to get y'all's thoughts personally on what Roy Williams has meant to this program um, from covering the team as an alum and et cetera. Uh, Shrell. I would say you have to go back to – 2000 um, to really get the context for what he means to the program because I'm sorry if I'm taking this from you, Greg, I saw you nod. Um, but, you know, he turned down North Carolina the first time, which he has said was one of the hardest things he's ever had to do. I think when he left Kansas was really the hardest thing he had ever had to do. Um, but he turned it down because he was so embedded in Lawrence, Kansas. You know, that was his home. That's where he thought he was going to end his career. And then when he got a second chance at it, um, North Carolina's program was in a bad, bad place. I mean, you know, you talk about max exoduses that there was going to be one had Matt Doherty stayed at UNC. You know, the program had gone a couple of years without winning an NCAA tournament game. Just something that Carolina fans and the program hadn't experienced in 40 years. So he comes in and, you know, to say he came in on a, on a white horse is, is not exaggerating. Uh, he came in with the credentials, with the, the background, with the know-how of Chapel Hill and college basketball and winning. Um, that could command the respect of players instantly. And once that happened, you know, he, it took a year to kind of get adjusted, but once that happened, he could, he took off. So yeah. I, I've always said like, you know, Kansas is a great school, but it's easier to recruit to Chapel Hill, I think, mm -hmm. or, or you can get more players at Chapel Hill than you can at Kansas. And you saw that after he broke through with that national championship, like Greg said, Carolina went on kind of a four-year run, you know, that is, you can put up with any, thing you know in the history of Carolina basketball from basically 06 to 09 with you know Tyler Hansbrough's time yeah um so the fact that he kind of rescued North Carolina's program from the depths of despair I think is something that should really be uh remembered and then he took it from that low the lowest it had really ever been um since before Coach Smith and took it to a high that you know depending on who you want to argue with that it never had so I think that's the legacy for Roy Williams is just how he um you know, took North Carolina to places it hadn't been and rescued it from a place it hadn't been as well. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about some of those teams and those championships and stuff. And then, you know, you have the 05 team with those great players, you know, nine team, the Hansborough years. And even after that with Kendall Marshall and Harrison Barnes, John Henson, those teams were great too. And then the Marcus Page era, Luke May. Um, we're doing a podcast tonight as well. Tommy Ash is going to host, going to preview that here. He's doing more of a round table. I'm sure Sherelle and Greg will be on with some other guests, maybe Dewey Burke. Hopefully any players we can get on as well. So stay tuned for that coming out, a roundtable reaction to um, the Roy Williams news. He's retiring. Uh, Greg, your kind of thoughts here quickly on, on what Roy Williams means for UNC basketball? Yeah, I think what stands out about Roy more than anything to me is loyalty. Um, and it kind of goes back to what Sherelle said, you know, in, in 2000, uh, the fact that, that Roy wanted to stay at Kansas um, and then, not thinking that he would ever have the opportunity to come back to North Carolina and knowing that he had committed to Kansas and that he was going to stay. Um, and I think that kind of, that kind of festered a little bit in terms of you go to 2008 uh, and, and he's wearing the, the Kansas sticker. Right. Um, and, and fans took that personally and they took that as a shot at North Carolina, but that just kind of showcased his loyalty. And when he commits to something and it's important to him, he's going to stick with it. You know, Dean Smith really went to bat for him and getting him that, that Kansas job. Um, and so he immense loyalty to Dean Smith, immense loyalty to this program, to the Carolina family, to the players. Um, we talked earlier about the NCAA investigation. That really hurt him. And the, the fact that he was determined to get through that and, and make sure that UNC could see the other side. Um, and I'm sure this is a very difficult decision for him. And, you know, it's a matter of he's having to tell recruits that, hey, I plan on being here. And he probably did plan on being here. 
but there are life decisions that have to be made. And this is one of them. Um, so more than anything, the way that he's handled himself with respect to the program, with respect to the players, there's a reason that, that all these guys love him like they do. And there's a reason there's been such an outpouring already uh, from former players and current players about kind of what he means to them. And I think we'll continue to see that in the weeks and months to come. Um, but more than anything, that, that's what stands out to me. Yes, the victories, all those things are important, but just kind of his, his personal beliefs and, and strong feelings uh, about the, the program and, and everybody involved is, is what kind of stands out. Awesome. We're going to get out here on this. If you've noticed, you've, had, you've seen Sherelle and Greg checking their phones, uh, checking sources, players, um, two of the most well-connected guys with UNC basketball. And I don't know what they can share with us now, but I wanted to get y'all's thoughts on what's next, maybe the process of how um, this, this turn of power uh, begins. We'll start with Sherelle. You know, what, what happens now? What's next? What do you think, in your opinion, uh, the, the way that UNC could turn to lead uh, North Carolina basketball? Uh, I'll, I'll let Greg get, get more into the details. I would think that, um, you know, the, the saying that every good AD has a list in his, mm -hmm. you know, in his, Five names. Um, yeah, pocket. yeah, five names or whatever. I'm sure that's there. But also, I would imagine, and this is pure speculation, so please don't take this as reporting. This is speculation. I repeat, this is me editorializing speculation. I'd imagine Roy and Bubba had a conversation, you know, either last night or this morning just about, hey, what, what are your thoughts about this? And, you know, where do we go from here? Um, whether or not that's the case, I don't know. But I, I would imagine that happened. And then from there, it's a question of um, – when the hiring happens, kind of who are the people involved in the hiring? And then is it a situation where you're going for best available coach, just someone to come in and can play or, or, or and can coach, or are you going for someone who is rooted in the Carolina ideology and the style of play that Carolina has become accustomed to and the things that kind of make Carolina, Carolina. So this is very much a, whatever decision the, the powers that be to make this is very much a decision that will tell you kind of the trajectory of Carolina basketball moving forward is it going to adopt these new principles that are out there and try new things or is it going to just tweak a little bit and find someone who has common ground with the ideology and makeup of Carolina basketball yeah I mean, that's the that's the million dollar question do they go outside the program or does it stay in the, in the family or even really close to the family with with an assistant coach or, or someone who's played for Roy Williams um, and I'm sure this news will be happening relatively soon. I mean, they got transfer, transfers, they got decisions to be made from players currently on their roster, and they got recruitments that are still going on into April and May, and they got to get this roster set for the 2021-22 season. Greg, how do you see this happening um, starting today with the, the change in power and, and your opinion on kind of how that goes and what it could look like for, for UNC? Well, I've, I've had these conversations uh, kind of behind the scenes for, for a number of years now, just because, as you noted earlier, Ross, Roy's 70. And so we knew this day was coming. And so I've always just kind of been interested, okay, whenever he decides to step down, what is the path forward? Um, and, and what I can tell you is, is Shrell kind of hit on it there. Um, it, it's really a matter of, okay, do you want to stay within the Carolina family or do you want to go – completely different and I, I think it's a middle ground I think what you're going to see is yes if you can find a coach that is in the Carolina family that checks all the boxes that's pretty much a no-brainer however um, if you look at kind of the track record right now I don't know that there's a, a no-brainer in that conversation right and so where you have to go is to say okay Carolina family if you can't get that you go to guys that maybe are not in the family but who understand and who appreciate what the Carolina family stands for. Um, so you're not going to be talking about somebody that comes in from an MBA factory, like kids being able to come to school here and, and have a 40 year decision uh, as Mac Brown likes to say is important. And I think that's key where things are going to get interesting is what type of politics take place because there are going to be people for sure who want to make sure that whoever comes is a true Carolina guy. And so it's going to be up to, to Bubba, who's going to be running this thing, of making that decision and talking with the powers that be in terms of how he wants to approach it. Um, I think there's a lot of options of guys who are not necessarily within the Carolina family tree, but who understand and appreciate what the Carolina family is about. Mm -hmm. I think there's a good pool there. Um, but it's, we're going to have to see what type of dynamics take place. Does Roy Williams want to get involved? Does he yeah. want to put his foot down? We don't know that. We don't know how he's going to approach this. 
And Dean Smith uh, was pretty was pretty vocal in, in making his decisions about who he wanted to follow him. And that's that's kind of why he retired when he did is a speculation. Uh, so a lot, a lot to play out there. I don't think, and I, I feel comfortable saying this, there won't be a guy that comes in who, who doesn't know what this program is about. I don't think you have to worry about that. We just have to determine at this point in time, is it going to be somebody with, with uh, strict ties yeah. or if there's going to be somebody on the periphery? I think Roy Williams will definitely have a role in deciding who is his successor. I would, uh, I would assume so, yes. So whether the, w- what that really means, uh, I'm sure he will be in the rooms and making those discussions. Awesome, guys. I mean, this is a – I think this is a top two job in the country. Uh, so they can get – I think it's I think it's Kentucky and North Carolina as a top two with, with maybe Kansas, Duke, following that, in my opinion. Um so they can get a lot of there be a lot of interest in this job. So they can make it a national search, then go to the NBA. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people that want this job. It's a great place to live, a great place to raise a family, and you have a, a program with so many ties, so many awesome players, and the legacy and the history and all that good stuff. So it's gonna be interesting to follow the next couple 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 weeks. Stay tuned to Inside Carolina, guys. We're gonna have a podcast tonight uh, with Tommy Ashley hosting a roundtable. That should be awesome. Probably a little bit longer. We wanted to hop on here and give you a a briefer, uh, even though it's hard to do a brief podcast when, when Sherelle and, and Greg go on the mic, um, <laughs> a brief podcast reacting to this news. Roy Williams retires, uh, three national titles, a bunch of wins, um, and he steps down as UNC's head coach. Guys, remember Johnny T-shirt.com and Johnny T-shirt right, right on Franklin Street. And remember to rate and review and subscribe to the Inside Carolina Podcast. Thanks, guys.